Are you still walking on sunshine? Like, it's still like all new at the house. It's only been three weeks. Yes, I don't know. Right. And I know it's going to get complicated. I know. No, it doesn't get complicated. But yes, walking on sunshine, it feels like I'm in the Garden of Eden. First 60 days, you you just see this little child, and then they start looking. First, you see that they notice your voice. You walk in and you go, I got the milk. Yeah. And they look up and they start kicking their feet because they see you. And now you know you're getting through somebody. They've been listening to you for nine months. Yeah, cool. They've been listening to you for eight months. Yeah. You know? And now they get to see you. Now, when you, I'll never forget the time I walked in the house and I go, hey, Mercy. And she couldn't see, but her little feet were kicking from the excitement. That's a complete different euphoria. You can't match that with drugs or alcohol or even being on stage. All drugs and all alcohol states and all altered states of consciousness and all momentary experiences are, whether people know it or not, they're going for that feeling that you have when you're holding your baby. Now, I'm not saying reproducing is the only way to get that. Right. No, 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 no. But no. certainly it is the difference between, you know, like you smell a rose perfume and you smell a rose, right? So there's like the rose perfume is kind of like a rose, but it sure as fuck isn't a rose. And like uh, ha- having a baby and really like not, not just like the experience of like contacting like the mosaic, the genetic mosaic of your ancestors in the face of your child, but... Also, finally, having to just put yourself on a, on a, just, you have to put yourself away. Away. Yeah, you really You just say, this isn't, uh, cause like. It's not about you. Yeah. It's not about you anymore. That's right. You're not, cause dude. Nothing to do with nothing it. To do nothing with to do with it. Nothing to do with it. You're me. done. You're done. Did you think you were going to be fucking Genghis Khan? No, you're no. not. You're not going to conquer more land mass than anybody in the fucking planet. You're not going to fucking invent teleportation. You're not going to be Pink Floyd. You're not going to be Lenny Bruce. No. And it doesn't fucking matter. Because this is better than that. This is better. And, and, and there's something so wonderful and humbling in that. Especially for a judgmental cunt like me, man. Because, you know, like I, so many times I've like... Uh, You know, it's e- it's easy if you could rationalize your like cowardice or your selfishness as being some kind of like revolutionary attitude, right? And like for me, I would shake my fist at families in a real cynical way, not literally. Me too. Me too. You me know, too. yeah. When did you? What age did you can? Did you think children would be a possibility in your life? Never. Never. I went through a period where I thought maybe I'll have a kid. I worked at a summer camp, man. I fucking love kids. Then I just gave up. I'm like, I'm not going to do that. I got real, real, like, I went through a pretty dark period in my life, man. I got real cynical. I got real cynical, real numb, and real, like, pseudo, I don't know. I was being lazy, man. And I was trying to, like, make my laziness seem smart or something. Or I was trying to, like, just, like, you know, imitative. You look around, you see the most fucking powerful person around. If they're cynical, you're like, all right, maybe I'll be cynical. You don't even question why necessarily. You just start, or, or even worse, you're aggressive, so you want to get a charge out of people. So you read some fucking Nietzsche or some shit, you know? And then you get around people. You don't care about Nietzsche, the will, the power, the sheeple, all that nonsense. You know what you care about? You care about telling some dumb ghost story, like throwing firecrackers at people. So you get this temporary rise out of people. You're like, wow, yeah, look what I'm telling you about fucking Nietzsche, man. Anything that doesn't destroy us only makes us stronger. You haven't even thought about what that means. You just say it. No, there's people just regurgitating shit, walking around. They don't even know what the fucking... Yeah. How did you... uh... I mean, uh, not to insult you in any way. Insult me, go ahead. You're, uh, you're a ladies' man. Ever since I've known you, how did you decide on this one to be the mom of your child? Holy shit, man. Thanks for that. That's a great question. Uh, and it's an embarrassing answer, which is that, because I'd heard this. I'd heard it so many times, and I'd always roll my eyes at it secretly. You know who said it to me? Freddie Soto. He said it to me about Corey. He's like, you know, I met her and I just knew I'm going to marry her. And um, 
I remember him telling me that. I mean, like, what the fuck are you talking about? That's not real. And I've heard that, you know, in various other places in a million, like, sort of nauseating romantic movies and songs. But holy shit, man, that's real. It was the craziest thing. And I, it was, it was like fusion or something. Like, I met her. We started hanging out. And this dawning realization was happening in both of us. It was like, we're going to get married. We're going to have, we're going to have a baby. And I can't explain it. It's like, a it's like the way the sun comes up. It wasn't like some flash or anything. It was just more like, whoa, this is this is it. This is like the thing. This is the thing. It's happening to us. We're like You guys married? What? You're married? Yeah, we're married. Are you married you guys got married officially before yeah. the baby. It happened real quick, man. And I I mean like it sounds irresponsible and I get it on paper. It sounds it sounds insane. You know, I asked her parents permission. Like, cause I'm from the south, and that's what we I do. Did, I did too. I yeah. I called my, I called Terry's father. When when I was talking to her dad, I could, you know, I, like, I could, I get it. I think he thought, oh, is this like some kind of thing where you like, knocked up, my daughter or something, and now you're gonna get married or so? I don't, I don't. Well, I'm not sure that I could have been project, but I, like, I get it, you know. But no, what happened was, we just wanted to have a baby all of a sudden. I had, like. Like two months before, I've been telling my brother, I'm not going to reproduce in this life. I'm just not going to have a baby. I'm not going to do that. And then suddenly, it was the most amazing encounter with truth. And and it's all, uh, any articulation of it, it just sounds like a fucking cliche, man. It just sounds like a cliche. So it's like, uh, God, what is it? What is it? When God laughs, when man makes plans, you know, that thing. Uh. You know, or like, true. yeah, true. I didn't think this was ever going to happen. Yeah. After the first ordeal, I didn't think it was in my realm. Just the negative thinking about it would keep it away. And yeah, it snuck in there. Even the whole thing about marriage and whatever. I mean, I married her and and, uh, you know, two or three years later, she was knocked up. It was like a, it was and I knew it. I knew it when we first went on our first date, we went to Jack in the Box. On the way home, that's how broke we were. We went to Jack in the Box, wow. and I knew it in the drive-in line that I was going to spend some time with this woman. That I didn't know she was the woman of my dreams or whatever. Just, but just how she was talking to me, I had never really. I had always dominated a conversation with women. She wouldn't allow that to happen. If it's two in the afternoon and you ain't high, go fuck yourself. Get out of my face. I want you around me like I want cancer in my ball sack. You know what I'm saying? You're going to come around here looking at me with your fucking white eyes, thinking that, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reform. Go fuck yourself. My morning starts at 5.30 a.m. Either you're there or you're square. You know what I'm saying?